This week on It's a Living. Oh, wow. I'm getting a taste of what it takes to be one of Canada's finest wine masters. The subtle taste of toe jam. And who says size doesn't make a difference? These for the winter months, yes. <laughs> Being mayor in Canada's biggest city, so, Marilyn, what happens in Fleming when it snows? Isn't quite the same as being mayor in Canada's smallest town. I have to ask you this. Have you ever been tempted to call in the army? Or? Never. No? Never ever thought of that. And now, the hardest working man in that TV business today, Peter Jordan. <laughs> you like to try some of those ice ones? Oh, thank you very much. Mm. That's delicious. Uh, quite a bit different than uh, what I'm making in my basement these days. You know, Canadian winemakers are doing a fabulous job creating unique and distinct wines. I, uh, I make a pretty unique wine myself, actually, so I thought it'd be really cool to follow around one of Canada's up-and-coming young winemakers and see how they make a living. It's the middle of the night. The middle of the winter. The Niagara on the Lake region of Ontario. This is a grape harvest, Canadian style. This crop of frozen grapes will make ice wine, one of the world's most exotic wines. So yep. why are we picking at night in the middle of the winter <laughs> anyway? I thought this would be a nice hot job. No, ice wine? Uh, this is the coldest point in the day. This is exactly when we want to be uh, picking the grapes. 29-year-old Sue Ann Staff is the wine master for Pilatary Estates Winery. She's in charge of the entire process, from vine to wine. These berries are good and hard and Oh frozen. yeah, you can, you can barely you see? squeeze them. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So when they go into the press, right. the, the, the water will be frozen. All that's going to come out is the very rich sugar and flavors that oh, are I in see. these berries. Believe it or not, these are perfect picking conditions. Sue Ann and her 30 workers have waited anxiously for this cold snap. Suppose we don't have a good cold freeze. These uh -huh. grapes are just rot on the vine and we wouldn't get any, oh, any juice at all. Oh, you'd waste this whole field. That's right. I get it. I anticipate that we'll be here um, till probably nine in the morning. It's gonna be oh nice and cold. My. and it, It's a case of when it's cold, you gotta go. There we go. There's all those grapes from last night. Yeah. Sue Ann gets no sleep because she has to put the 35 tons of grapes we picked overnight through the presses. I only have one shot to do this right, right at harvest time. Uh huh. And uh, if I make a mistake now, I have to live with it all year long and for years while that wine's being sold. Okay, so at this point, what we're going to do is get right in the press and get the grapes all in the little areas that, uh, oh, really? that haven't been filled in. Yes. This is just like the olden days where we crush them with our feet. That's right. I was sort of worried if I had to do it with bare feet because I thought, you know what? <laughs> As you bare foot, bare feet would be better. You wouldn't want would like better. the subtle taste of toe jam. That's right. <laughs> Well, it's the yeast from your feet that add complexity to yeah. the wine, actually. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Use the brake and turn the press off. Peter, this is what winemakers call the sound of money. <laughs> oh yes, I guess so. Wait, now, is it? Um, does it taste sweet? Or? Oh, it's it's very sweet. It's a uh, oh, forty wow. forty percent sugar. I mean, that's honey sweet. Mm. Okay. Well, I can hardly wait to taste the finished product, but there's a lot of work before that. As a wine master, Sue Ann is responsible for thousands of liters of wine. She produces 25 varieties from inexpensive Rieslings to pricey Merlots. That means on any given day, she could be filtering one batch and fermenting another. Could you please talk to the yeast uh, there, Peter? Let them know they're doing an important job and give them a little pep talk. Okay. What do you normally say to them? Uh, okay, boys, there you go. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Make an award winning wine, please. All right, yeasty boys, go forth and be strong and.
Make our call. Perfect. Okay, so this is a big part of my job, Peter, uh, the science aspect of winemaking. Um, I do a lot of testing here from checking the acid levels and pH levels, but here we're monitoring a fermentation. We want to check the sugar content of one of the ice wines that's fermenting. Take a look through there and tell me what you see. I read about 37. I need 35 as a minimum average. So Now where did you learn all this stuff? Oh, uh, well, from, well, the years of training and uh, down at the University of Adelaide in South Australia was oh, where I got my formal training. Oh, so there's a school you can go to to learn the science and all this you sort of stuff. You go to school, you drink wine all day, and you get marks for it. Come on. Doesn't sound great? Come on. <laughs> and, and what, and then in the afternoon you go to surfing class? <laughs> <laughs> that was my minor. <laughs> So this is where the art of winemaking really happens, Peter. Here in the barrel cellar, the training and taste buds of the wine master come into play. Being the winemaker, I can decide as to uh, how long I think it should stay in the barrel. Oh, really? Uh, and yeah. you decide that according to? According to how much flavor of the oak barrel the wine can handle. So sometimes it may only be two months. Sometimes it may be a year and a half, such as my 1998 Merlot. Tonight, I'll be Sue Ann's assistant at a big wine tasting gala, so I get a crash course on how to talk about wine with the experts. You see from the side of the glass, there's little tiers or little legs. The legs of the wine are there. The higher the alcohol content, yes. the slower and the, the slower those legs will tear down the side of the glass. I see. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say check the legs out, out on that wine. Yes, mm -hmm. and put your nose right in the glass. Right in the glass. And we're looking for the aroma, the bouquet. Is it very soft and subtle on the nose, or does the nose just come up and hit you in the face? I smell red wine. You smell know. red wine? Mm. That, that's positive. That's a start. <laughs> that's a start, yes. <laughs> okay, so now we get to the best part. All right. We finally get to taste it. Okay, and where do I spit? <laughs> um, you can do that if you like. I, I, I don't like. I would rather drink. I thought that's what you had to do. Let's <laughs> Three, two, one. Excellent. Huh? Yep, perfect. Perfect. There's still one job left to do, bottling the ice wine for tonight's gala. With everything bottled and corked, just enough time to get into my tuxedo for tonight. This is the Wine Society event of the year. The $100 a ticket ice wine gala overlooking Niagara Falls. All the best experts and big wine critics are here to judge this year's vintage. Ice wine is the Vidal or the Riesling? It's a crucial time for Sue Ann because this is where all her hard work is put to the test. Judgments made at events like these can make or break her career. Great balance, nice sugar in the front, mm. great finish in the acid, cleans the palate. And since I make a pretty mean Chateau Curry basement wine myself, I bring a bottle to the gala for an expert's opinion. I made it about two weeks ago, so... <laughs> two weeks ago? Yeah. My big uh, advice would be to keep it away from the furnace. So you can taste kind of the furnace in there, right? Yeah, that's right. Is it um, natural gas or propane furnace? <laughs> I think natural gas. <laughs> natural gas. That's why it's a little cleaner than, than the oil. <laughs> okay. You are good. <laughs> a second opinion is always good. So I talked to some other experts. Did you use green? Like Linda Bramble, the Niagara region's premier wine writer. Green. <laughs> <laughs> A little bacterial spoilage in the nuts. Just a little bit. And Don Zeraldo, president of Inniskillen Wines. So maybe I should maybe clean the pail. Okay. I didn't know I was supposed to use green. No. Uh, well, I, I, I wish I could tell you what grape variety was made from, but I'd be guessing. I think it was Pinot something. It has a bit of a rye flavor. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. <laughs> but considering you don't even know the name of the grape, you're not doing badly. Yeah, yes, I, okay. <laughs> um, Did you want me to finish it for you? <laughs> 
And there we go. There's a little sample of the wine that we bottled for it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, good. Cheers. Sue Ann has given me an appreciation for the work of a true wine master and the best part of the job, enjoying the fruit of our labor at the end of a long work day. What do you think? Uh, these go great with desserts and should we go for a swim? I think I could do a couple laps in the table here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Coming up, they share the same occupation, but their job specs are a little different. The worst part of the job, meetings. All the meetings. You meet once a month and you get $20 a meeting, that's and that's it. your pay. That's it. 